Hello again, and welcome to Crime in Music. I'm your host, Brian J. Kinsley, and with me as always, my friend, Ben Ruto. What's that? Is that still cool to say? No, but it's, I wish this was a 90s edition. That would have flowed in beautifully. Uh, if you like things from the old days and the new and music and crime, you're in the right spot. This is Crime and Music, where every other Wednesday, Ben and I will tell you a story about people in and around the music business and their misadventures in the law-breaking. If you like music history, true crime, murder mystery, and more, you are in the right place. Subscribe, share with a friend, and uh, check us out on all the social medias. Yeah, I don't feel like we tell the audience a story. You tell the story, Brian. I am part of the audience. You tell lots of stories on the show. Well, I tell, but not about the topic. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I impart some of my knowledge of life to our audience, which is really gold. That's why you're here. Yeah. But I think I'm, I represent the audience. You tell us a story, and we all enjoy that. A nice story from Brian about bad guys in the music industry that do crime. Some are girls. Yes, some all are right, girls. All right. Well, yes. Uh, so basically, if you like those sort of things, you're in the right spot. We've got tales of music and mayhem today that are going to just blow your mind. I'm ready for my mind to be blown. No, actually, today is a kind of a fun episode. It's, it's interesting, and I, I hope you like it. It's a little different. It's not something, uh, somebody that we usually cover. Well, I liked our last Frank Sinatra episode. Frank Sinatra was interesting. You know, it's hard to get a lot of different genres in, and I mean, I don't even know what genre Frank's in. He's just Frank freaking Sinatra. I think I've categorized him as jazz on, you know, our, on our schedule. <laughs> jazz yeah. or big band? Yeah, yeah. I That'd be so. right. Vegas right. performer? What do you want to call Showtime? No, I mean, show he's, tunes? he's a big guy. It's a big dude. Yes. He's in... His own, because he just, it was like Elvis. He did a lot of, he did, I, I, I like Frank Sinatra. Did a little bit of everything, huh? So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this one. We got a big, fat stack of cards like we do every week. Yeah, that's, that's what I try for. Yeah. There were a couple we had some skinny, we somehow still drug them out to an hour. There are. I was going to say, guys, let us know. Do you like a 45-minute podcast? You want an hour podcast? Do you want to just get the topic covered? Doesn't matter the time length podcast? Eh. Let me know. Yeah, they got the pause button. If it's too long, pause it. Or sit Save your, some for tomorrow. Sit in your driveway. You know what? If it goes over an hour, Brian, look at it like this. You go to the restaurant, you order a shake, and they bring you out a big glass thing with a shake, some whipped cream on top, and a cherry. Yes. A straw, and it's beautiful, and you're eating that. I love it. And then they bring you out that like metal oh. cup that has still like an inch or two of shake left in it. Yep. That's the last 15 minutes of our show is that little metal cup. Beautiful. And you know you love that metal cup. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you. That was great. All right. All right, right now we're just going to get right into it. Guess the guess this week's going to be slightly different. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, I'm going to actually use more of a like game show sort of sort of rules here, game night rules. I'm going to get to listen to music. It's going to be a word it's going to be a word game though. I'm going to have you word guessing game. words, okay? Like Pat Sajak shit? Kind of. Yep, yep. All right. So I just wanted you to know that before I started the music, but here we okay. go with guess the guess. Okay. First word. First word. One of the Great Lakes. Eerie. Correct. Really? Second word. Uh, birth blank. Canal. Yes. Eerie canal. What, do you think I'm not? <laughs> it's like, is it written somewhere? Am I, Am I these too easy? You're doing so well so far. Uh, third word. Um, it's like a southern United States word for Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Soda. Pop. Which one? Well, that would be soda down there. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So, all right. so what do we got so far? Erie Canal Soda. And you can put pop in there if you want to. Erie Canal Soda Pop. Is this a fighter on Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? <laughs> it is. Wow, that's funny. It says character in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Soda Popinski. <laughs> uh, fourth word. Um, how would you, what would you call Woodstock or, or like uh, Coachella? Festival. So what do we have total? Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival. Yay! I feel like you read that somewhere and that it's... Uh, well, I still don't know what we're doing. We're doing the Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> you literally got it that well. Are you not kidding me? I swear it's oh, written down man. somewhere. Yeah, Did you look through my cards when I went for drinks? Well, what? at first I thought you were going to do charades, and I was like, huh, radio, radio for, for zero. zero. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just like, I got, I'll got. i do a word game with him, and uh, yeah. So. Right, so I get to chalk that one up on the wind board? You do. I felt like you're just leading me to water, man. What, what, one of the great lakes, you could have picked. I, I, I could get it in like five or six guesses, right, probably. Right, you could have picked Michigan. <laughs> you know? Erie. Michigan. Uh, Erie doesn't touch Michigan, you know. Michigan viaduct <laughs> Coca-Cola jam. I mean, you know, you could have picked anything, but you oh, went well, right that, to Erie Canal Soda Pop next, Festival. That's next Wednesday. Damn, All right. That was wonderful. Erie, we did a festival. Um, 
episodes ago, a yeah. billion episodes yep. ago, and that was a good episode. I like Altamont liked, Free Concert. I personally liked that episode at, to be in my top three. Oh, nice! Only because I it was it was very interesting. We were talking about a lot of different people. Oh yeah, a lot of different big names. Oh yeah, and just the whole entire story of that three or four day event where they were late booking it and everything else. It was so interesting. Well, put on your bell bottoms, buddy, and braid up your hair, because uh, that's where we're going is to the rock concerts of the 1970s. Okay, so this would be, you said 19, set what year? September 4th, 1972, in Griffith, Indiana, Labor Day Monday, Labor Day weekend. It's the Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival! So, so to, to put it in perspective real quick, Woodstock and the Altamont were both in 69. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a couple years after that. They're probably still trying to catch that lightning in a bottle. That is the exact next card. Okay. Uh, Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival is also, you might know it as the Bull Island Rock Festival, or they called it Woodstock on the Wabash. Everybody called it Woodstock at the Bloom Bloom. <laughs> well, it's right on the Wabash River. We'll get there. 1972. It's been a mere four years since Woodstock and the Summer of Love. No. It's now the early 70s, the summer of love. We're going out the window, but whatever. Right. <laughs> Two young dudes in Indiana decide they want to start promoting concerts and festivals. Okay. Tom Duncan oh, and Bob Alexander. Okay. So Tom and Bob. Sounds like two dudes that you'd find in Indiana, for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Tom and Bob, Alexander. Tom and Bob. They want to throw a music festival that betters Woodstock. It's better than Woodstock. It's best as Woodstock. It's Everybody's like we been were trying ever since. For a couple years now. Now, they do have some prior experience. The old Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival was not their first rodeo. It was their second. Okay. Couple they did month- a rodeo? Well, no. Well, funny enough, we'll get there. Uh, a couple of months before Tom and Bob decide to practice, they have a small-scale festival called the Freedom Festival and Ice Cream Social. Tom and Bob. And it's Tom in... Tom and Bob. I see. That's why I specifically went... Bob and Tom. That's why I said Tom and Bob, is to not confuse with the radio guys. So Tom and Bob put on the Freedom Festival and Ice Cream Social, Social at Bowes Field in Evansville, Indiana. Okay. Featuring the musical stylings of Edgar Winter, New Riders of the Purple Sage, and Ike and Tina Turner. Oh, the Ike and Tina Turner review came you in You got it. It was a huge success. She was just the singer. Kids are out there with ice cream all over their faces. Ike Turner's out there just pushing Tina in the back. So like, look on. at is, me. Are there really, is this, is this just to make it sound good? They put the like candy in there? I don't know, but it literally is called the Freedom Festival and Ice Cream Social. That's the name of it. All right. So, but yeah, I figured it was fun. We got a little shout out to Ike and Tina back in there and just eating ice cream. (laughs) Give me my ice cream, Tina. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom and Bob start their plan to build a festival that will be bigger than Woodstock. That was their quote. Dun, dun, dun. We'll have it on Labor Day weekend in Chandler, Indiana. That's a small town near Evansville, Indiana. Chandler is in Warwick County. Um, Indiana, United States, located just east of Evansville, along the Ohio River, like the southeast corner, kind of. Okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm picturing it. Yeah, you got a population of 2,878 as of the 2010 census. The goal was to get 55,000 attendees. The scheduled lineup. You ready for this? Yeah, this is back in 1972. 1972, okay. man. This is the schedule. They, they did put this lineup together. Yes. Okay. Now we've... Been, this wasn't their wish list. We've been called out before about music knowledge on the internet, but 70s rock and roll, this I know. I don't know a lot of anything. All right. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I'm the ditzy blonde, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them. <laughs> They'll never know which one of us is us. I don't know who that's. You know what's be. funny is there's pictures of us on the internet and our voices, but people have never seen us like video talking, so they actually think our voices are different. You ever think of that? People, th- <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't even like that. Yeah, I mean, we I guess now have listened to our voice on recorded. Oh, I'm over it. Quite I used bit, to get yeah. cringy, but now I'm over it. But I remember that as a kid, you'd make oh. a recording on one oh. of those old tape players that had the buttons like that were huge levers. You're like, <laughs> You had to push two buttons at once to record. <laughs> That's to record, yeah. And, they and really that, wanted you to commit. And that tape, that tape deck player was maybe a foot long, six inches wide, four inches deep. Oh yeah. And it had like a leather case on there with a big handle, like it was luggage. Because <laughs> it was. <laughs> and the headphones, well, they're about the same size as the headphones today. Headphones have really gone up and down in size. Yeah, they did. They got real and tiny and then went big, back. Now, now everybody's got Beats, you right. know, whatever the big yeah. ones. Record sales are up. And you would record yourself maybe for school the first time, you know, because that's the only people that could afford a tape cassette player recorder. Yep. And you'd listen to yourself and, oh, wow, I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> I hated I hated my voice. 
probably a lot of our listeners are feeling very empathetic to that right now because they hate my voice too. Well, it's odd because you <laughs> love the sound of your own voice. I love hearing Naturally. myself talk. <laughs> Oh, God. I right. don't even know where that came from, but go ahead, That's Brian. funny. All right, well. So here's the lineup. We got the lineup. Here's the lineup. Big lineup, 1972. Black Sabbath. Big one. Joe Cocker. That's a big guy. The Allman Brothers. Still huge today. John Mayhall. That I've heard of. Cheech and Chong. <laughs> They're funny. Canned Heat. We'll get to Canned Heat. That's an interesting that band. That's a band. Uh, it's a rock and roll band started around a biker gang. Canned Heat. Yeah. Going on to the country where I want to go. I've heard that song. Oh, that's Candy. That's Candy. Okay. I don't know them. Fleetwood Mac. See, it's huge. All right. These are honestly the bands. This, these, this is the, these Tom and Bob are Indi- lining up. These two Indiana dudes. Yep. And let's get some ice cream in like every big band in the era right yep. now. These who right, cool. are getting. Uh, that sounds great. Ball and Jack. Don't know them. An American rock group uh, formed in. Uh, it's a horn rock group, so they play the horn. Formed in Seattle, Washington in 1969. Hmm. They had a major, well, a minor hit in 1970 with Superhighway, which hit number 90 on the Billboard Top 100. Okay. I don't know, Superhighway. And Boy Dukes. Oh, yeah. Dad Nugent. There you go. Ted Nugent's American rock band formed in 1964 <clears throat> out of Chicago, Illinois. Later based in Detroit, Michigan. They are known for a one-hit journey to the center of the mind. Yeah. Bob Seger. That's huge. This is, a, this is, a, this <clears throat> is very bold. Bang. The Philadelphia rock group with one hit single Questions, which reached 90 on the Billboard Top 100. Okay. Ravi Shankar. Oh, yeah. That was the guy that played with uh, the Beatle guy. Correct. A lot. Albert King, Brownsville Station, Mike Quattro, The Faces, Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, yeah. Gentle Giant. I don't know that guy. An English progressive rock band one time stated its aim was to, quote, expand the frontiers of contemporary popular music at the risk of becoming very unpopular. That's a lot. That's a circular thinking right there. Uh, although this stance oh. changed to alter significantly with time. They're like, you know what? Uh, being popular is better. It's, it's fine. Yeah, it pays the bills. Here's one. Black Oak, Arkansas. You heard Ooh, of them? What? Black Oak, Arkansas no. is an American rock band from... Black Oak, Arkansas. Correct. And uh, they have names, uh, uh, such songs as Hot and Nasty. All right. Lord Have Mercy on My Soul. Okay. And Jim Dandy to the Rescue. Jim I... Dandy to the Rescue. Jim Dandy to the Rescue. What, are they like a, a, a cult revivalist band or something? Well, no, crap? but it actually it's kind of more like a uh, uh, Howlin' Wolf type of guy. He's like, I'm Jim Dandy and I'm going to rescue. You know, like a real growly voice All sort right, of thing, yeah. no? There's a guy that plays darts with us on our dart league. And he talks like the... The trainer on Rocky, oh, and he yells yeah, every no, he yells no. at everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell into the mic now. <laughs> Back so off, everybody. Yeah. Just... He'll okay. So he always wants to get in, play darts, and get the f out. Mic I mean, control. He doesn't want to be sitting around forever. So his voice has after seventy years of smoking three packs a day, <laughs> and he's about four and a half foot tall, and his face looks like a catcher's mitt. You're gonna eat lightning and crap oh, yeah. thunder, and he'll just be yelling across the bar. Come on, get out of going. We gotta play darts. <laughs> oh so, God! Every time this now everybody's catching on to this guy. Just kind of, I think he thinks he's being funny. But we just every every time he his team comes up to play, the entire bar lights up. Get up there, Johnny! I'm going to play a dart. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. All right, that was like the raspy voice. That is that's Black Oak, Arkansas. Um, they had a bunch of cool songs. I actually listened like I was listening to the bands on the Erie Pop Canal, whatever festival uh, Erie. Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival. Okay. I was going through their bands, listening to them, and uh, Black Oak, Arkansas. Check them out, man. They're really, they're. I think you would like them. Huh. Okay. They got uh, some fundamentalist religious groups protesting them because they said that they contain backwards, like backmasking. You know, when you record words oh, backwards. That's so stupid. And it's because Dude. part of the, there's a song where their singer goes, "Dog see, not thoughts, not thoughts," three times. What's Which is, if you look at it, it's Satan, he is God. But, I mean, you know, outside of that, it was really a coincidental thing. I don't Dude, know if I'm trying was... to indoctrinate you into being a s- satanic, like, in my cult or whatever. Yes. Whatever evil thing I'm pushing. Yes. I'm going to make it as clear as Very possible. Very clear. <laughs> Very clear messages. Even though, back then, it was very easy to play music backwards. Yes. You can't, it's very hard today. You'd have to find a program on the internet. Then you just took your finger and put the record on neutral and and made it go backwards. That's true. I buried Paul. Strawberry Fields Forever at the end. I heard there's a great lentil soup if you play a backwards recipe for that. Anyway. <laughs> right. um, okay, we're back in the lineup. Guess who else they had? There's still more to come. Oh, dude, I got cards. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles. 
That's huge! Pre-Joe Walsh, though, right after Take It Easy came out and Witchy Woman were released. Ooh, Witchy Woman. Okay. Witch, witch A Woman. Witch A Woman. It's Witch A Woman. <laughs> it could be our song. <laughs> All right, the Chambers Brothers. No. <laughs> Boone's Farm. I like to drink. Slade. I stole some Boone's Farm once for Nicole. Can we say that name? Uh, yeah, sure. You can say all the names you want, buddy. <laughs> oh, so hot. All right, this band Slade, they rose to prominence during the glam rock era in the 70s, achieving 17 consecutive top 20 hits and six number ones on the UK singles charts. Slade? Slade. All right, no. No? I like no. that word, though. Uh, Guys named Delbert and Glenn, they showed up to play some music. Fry? No, didn't say. And uh, then Nazareth, Scottish rock band. Hair of the songs dog. like, hey, nailed it. Hair of the dog and love hurts. Love hurts. Um, There you go. That's the hair, lineup. Hair of the dog. Such a dumb song. <laughs> Do a little hair of the dog. I didn't, I couldn't pull, I couldn't remember that one. Uh, I remembered love hurts. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you're asking me to do it. I can't. Okay, I'll do it later in the show when it pops into my head like uh, a little, right. like a little grumbling out of a bag. And I gotta, I gotta get it out. Get him out there. Yeah. That's the lineup, dude. All right. How I mean, many listeners now have Hair of the Dog playing in their head and they can't get it out? They're like screaming at the headphones. Yeah. Like, it's like this guy's. Da, na, 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 Batman. I'm, I can't do it. Nazareth. Nazareth. All right. So Nazareth. basically, that's the lineup, right? And they took out ads in Rolling Stone magazine to advertise that lineup leading up to the event. Right? That's a big, that's a bold lineup. It's a huge concert. How many coming. days? Uh, four days. Labor Day weekend. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's. You know, that's, a big, that, that's the first one, right? In the, in the spring? Yeah. You know, you know what weekend that what? is? No, Labor Day. Isn't that, uh, that's September. Is September that Labor Day? Memorial. No, that's... Memorial Day, Labor Day. I do this all the time, too. I, I do, too. My wife's a teacher. She gets both of those weekends off. So you don't really need to know what they are. I don't know. No. Uh, no, the one in the spring is Rush Day. Yes. Yeah. I think that's Memorial Day. Pretty sure it's Memorial Day. That's the spring one. So this was Labor Day. This was in September, August. To all of our listeners that say we're idiots. We're not. We, eh. just, we just didn't look back three cards. Eh. Labor Day. Way to have facts on cards. Yeah. That's, see, this is why we didn't do the, the cards on the, on, the, on the iPad. Yeah, you had the word, the back button. Now you had the forward button. All right. So basically, like the hitting the button and on the internets, they're, the ticket sales, like the mail order ticket sales, they're selling really, 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 really well. Well, with that lineup, dude. You would buy a ticket just to go see one of those bands. Oh, God. Yeah, right? That was a headlining band for like 90% of that How list. How many tickets did they want to sell? Did we 55,000. Well, I mean, Woodstock was over 100,000, and the Altamont got over about around 100,000. I think Woodstock topped out at like 318,000. Something huge. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, with less than a week to go, everything's rolling along. They got a problem. The locals of Evansville aggressively lobbied against the festival. But what, just a week before it? Yep. They didn't want tens of thousands of these, quote, unwashed ne'er-do-wells descending upon their quaint little town. Sign, signs everywhere, sign. <laughs> Tuck my hat. freaky people need not apply. I have tucked my hair up under my hat and went in and asked why. All right. Uh, Mayor Russell Lloyd of Evansville. You can't Indi- own land, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't own land. You're poor. <laughs> Mayor Russell Lloyd of Evansville banned the event from taking place in Evansville city limits. Oh, I can. I, I own the land. I'm the mayor, and I ban it. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm the whiz. The whiz. <laughs> nobody exactly. beats nobody me. Beats me. <laughs> Just days before it was slated to begin, Warwick County officials were joined by the Indiana Attorney General in the courthouse hearings in Boonesville, where undercover state police officers showed secret videotapes from surveillance work they'd done earlier that summer at a rock festival in Fremont, Indiana. Okay, so they're just now scare tacticing all these old white, these old silver hairs. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I get it. If I live in this town, I, I, I live in this town. It's yep. a small community. Yes. A lot of what I, I, I want it to be is what it is, and that's the reason I'm here. Right. This is what I like. I like it this way. It should never change. And I don't want 100,000 people coming in and wrecking up the place. 55,000 hippies. Right. And unwashed dirt balls okay they might have had a little stereotyping going on but just that sheer number of people coming through your town and then leaving with i guess no real knowledge of how it might benefit me no i don't want that (laughs) no 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 go somewhere else or give me some money i feel like the money that was coming well i guess if you think hippies don't have money well no but what how how are they going to make money they're buying concert tickets on on mail order man they must have those two dudes are making money well no but i mean those people must have got money somehow but they're not coming in and spending money in the town because i'm assuming there's absolutely no lodging 
and there's not enough for 55,000, an influx of 55,000 people. Well, there has to be something, right? No. Well, okay, one, no. that that, that They picked this town, it sounds like, because it was a big, empty field on the river. I think you might be right. So I get, I get it, but, man, it kind of sucks that they didn't all get on the same page and say, hey, can we do this uh, next year and um, the Eagles are going to be here? <laughs> You like the Eagles, don't I, you? I like the Eagles. I do. I do. But I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't like that the town, I don't know. I, I just feel like they blew an economic opportunity is all. Well, they might not have any way to get economic money. I mean, if you don't got restaurants and hotels in your town. You know what? I've researched this, so I know what happens. And I'll just tell you. Okay. We'll get there. Okay. All right. So basically what we got now, we're at court. We're listening to the Attorney General of Indiana He's got these state cops who have this video surveillance footage of another concert that happened in Fremont and caught on film were half naked hippies engaged in heavy drug use and what described and what detectives described as other acts of filth. All right. Yeah. Well, it is a concert. (laughs) Now, it's funny because later we will get to it. There is a movie from the Indiana State Police of the concert that we're talking about right now. And uh, they used to show it in schools, like like a reefer madness type of video, like, <laughs> like oh, no, don't do this. And so there's a Facebook group out there uh, that's also working on getting it published, like the, the video footage published. Seriously, it's called the Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival, Bull Island, Illinois Facebook group. So if you're curious. That's a, that's a mouthful. Yeah, check it out. There's actually, there's a little couple of cool clips. There's like the transcripts and some court proceedings and stuff like that. It's funny just to see what cops were like, look at him. They ain't wearing no clothes. That guy don't have no <laughs> shoes on. Now, he appears to be smoking a cigarette, but that could be a marijuana cigarette. We do not know. The devil's lettuce. It's the devil's <laughs> lettuce. That's so sick. The electric cabbage. <laughs> nice. All right, so Bob and Tom. Uh, Tom, Tom and Bob. And Tom. Yeah. They assured local officials that they'd hired plenty of private security, including teams of karate experts from Los Angeles and Chicago. Okay, so Steven Seagal's showing up in his in his thin years. <laughs> now, they're not there for crowd control, but uh, they're going to you know be on hand just in case things do get out of hand. Yeah, because all you got to do if two guys start fighting and you need to break them up is just take a karate stance and say, Hi-ya! And you put on your yellow shooter glasses and look at them real stern-like. Babe. And now, break, as you... <laughs> break their tibia in two places. As you can imagine... Bob and Tom were met with some skepticism. (laughs) The courts told them that they couldn't hold the festival in Indiana. So the men rushed to find a new venue. And then you got acts like Rod Stewart and Black Sabbath starting to cancel. Well, hold on. So these two dudes get up in front of that commission, the The court, the court. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 I, I, I understand your concern. I hear our concern. Also, we've already taken measures and steps to, um, make sure that everything goes off without a flaw. Yep. Uh, we've hired some preemptive, hired some security. We have security. And everybody at this point is probably going, these guys know what they're talking about. Oh, all right. And then they say, we got some karate dudes coming in. <laughs> and just to let everybody know, we, we don't take karate dudes real, I mean, serious today. Experts. Nobody really took them real seriously back then either. No. And there's a reason for this. Yes. You shouldn't. No. <laughs> But Any we, of the mixed martial arts, it should just not be taken seriously. I, I see. You're baiting me now. <laughs> As we all know, Brian so likes funny. to wrestle other dudes so in ropes. Funny. This kid, actually, we've been training this kid now for like 10 years. He finally has got his first uh, MMA fight this, this coming up in Br- April. This is Brian talking so, personally about a, uh, yeah. a dude he wrestles nakedly. Uh, we're not naked. I wear shorts. <laughs> and a robe. <laughs> Sometimes I wear robe. shorts and a robe, too, Some, when, I, when I'm getting in or out of the hot tub. <laughs> I tell you, doing a lot of MMA, a hot tub would come in handy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure all you and your dudes would look nice in there. It would be fun. <laughs> nice recovery. All right, I'm Active sorry. recovery. I'm sorry, guys. That's just funny to do. Ben likes making fun of people. He's a bully. <laughs> yeah, I just, just, don't, just don't hit me with your karate chops. Hi-ya! All right, what do These we got hands here, hands are so- <laughs> with people with registered deadly weapons as hands coming to uh, Indiana. The courts are like, nope, you can't have it here. So they got to find a new place to go. And while they're doing that, Rod Stewart, he's like, I'm out. Yeah. Amateurs. I... Black Sabbath, he's like, I'm out. Amateurs. Yeah. Well, they can't. They, they, do you think that were they bailing because the dates change or just the venue is changing? Well, the venues, they don't have a venue. Okay. I R- guess I would I'm bail like, too. I'm not flying in to where am I flying? I can stay on the road and do like another show yep. in Philly. And, yep. you know, so you got flower children coming in from all over the Midwest already showing up. 
in Indiana, <laughs> right? The festival seems doomed before it even started. Oh, okay. We got a quote from Bob. The quote, all we ever set out to do was have a great show and make a lot of money. We'd spent over $700,000, so our position was we had to do the festival some way. Come hell or high water, the people are going to have an event. Yeah, well, you know, when you start kicking off one of these festivals back then, because just lack of communication alone. Oh, God. Yeah. Everybody on the West Coast hears some big hippie fest going on. Start trucking, Start going, baby. man. Yeah. And there's no way to, like, send them a tweet on the way over when they're in Kansas <laughs> to stop because we canceled it. Just, just type it real quick. <laughs> yeah, P.S. No. There's none of that. Uh, the can- rock, the concert has been uh, moved. And these kids aren't watching YouTubes, and they're not you know, probably not even picking up a newspaper, and they're not going to print in a newspaper. No, but uh, like you're saying, though, you couldn't just phone people up and tell them that the concert's changed, right? Once so, the fuse is lit, these, yeah. These dudes needed to find a spot, like, quick. Yeah. Like, you can stick a sign in the ground that says, that concert this way, and yeah, then that'll, and that's good. Yeah, them but, 10 right. miles, right. So they found a spot. They got a plot of farmland in Illinois. Named Bull Island. Okay. In fact, not an island. Not not an island. But rather a collection of swampy fields. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. <laughs> the festival grounds were situated on a changing bend east of the Wabash River. The festival since then uh, began to be infamously referred to as the Bull Island Festival. I think there's probably some pretty good deer hunting down there. I bet you're probably right. Yeah. The venue had a capacity for some 55,000 odd participants. Bull Island could be accessed by road only from the Indiana side, as the other end was surrounded by the Wabash River. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So basically, making the festival only reachable from the Indiana side, although it fell under the jurisdiction of Illinois, created a tricky location. So there were no police forces from either state present to monitor the event. Well, right. Because. <laughs> Literally making it a chaotic and lawless wasteland. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hey, man. And like, you're just but in they your got the karate VW... guys still, right? Yeah. The karate experts are privately hired security. So I'm Chuck just... and Bruce and, you know, Jean-Claude are over there just <laughs> watching the hippie our via VW bus vans roll in. And hey, mailman, man, peace. Hey, there's a couple guys over there fighting. You're a karate guy. Go take care of him. I'm just a yellow belt. I'm just, I can only take tickets and hand out drinks. Let me get a brown belt for you. Hold on. I have to do my crane kick. Hold on. <laughs> just stay like there propping up and just. Stay there for a minute. Come at me, bro. Uh, get ready. Come at me, bro. <laughs> it doesn't work if he doesn't come at me. I don't, and I think that kick's illegal in tournament competition. <laughs> well, now, it should be. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> the only police on the festival grounds were three county deputy sheriffs from Illinois. So they did get three dodes. Yes. Basically, um, to witness the mayhem. <laughs> that's true. That uh, roughly, though, <clears throat> that's one cop for every sixty-six thousand fans. Okay. Oh, did I not mention uh, that that like four hundred thousand people showed up instead? No. Oh, <laughs> to what? I feel like I I I, I got that. Right. Maybe it's coming up here somewhere for, real yeah, quick. Forty. Or 400,000 people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what happened. Okay, yeah, I didn't put that fact somewhere in these cards. Damn, right. Did they all have a ticket? But uh, no, it, we'll get to that, though. That's coming. So uh, festival goers, yeah, so one cop for every 66,000 people. Think you're good. <laughs> festival goers uh, said, quote, we were told uh, if Indiana police approach you to say, fuck you, I'm in Illinois. And if Illinois police approach you, say, fuck you, I'm in Indiana. Hey, okay, sidebar. <laughs> for, this is for our listeners, PSA, yes. really. Yes. If a police officer shows up, and I know Brian's big time into shut the fuck up Mondays. Oh whatever. yeah, yeah, that's the one. You don't say but nothing. if you're if you're not doing anything nothing. wrong, well, act, just be cool, man. If a cop comes up to you, don't start your first sentence with "fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase the range of this. <laughs> if anybody comes up to you and like starts talking fuck to you, you and man. they're not being a dick. Don't start the conversation with "fuck you." That's that's a hard open, right there. And <laughs> that's a position you're maker. You're coming. You take about forty percent off, yeah, Brian. You're coming in hot, right there, right? Yeah, jeez. Hey, excuse me, kids. I was just going "fuck you." I'm in Indiana. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I was just looking for the John. I didn't. Is a bath powder John around here? No. All right. Yeah. I it's just. I don't know. There's somewhere in the middle where police don't have to be dicks and people don't have to be dicks. I think most of the time it is like that. That's a nice compromise, I right? Don't know. Right. Yeah, well, you're gonna want to. Somebody shoots you in the ass, you're going to want a cop around real quick. <laughs> I would say. I'm pro-cop, okay? Right. If I'm you, getting poked with a bicycle spoke, I want police to be I, made available. I need a police officer. Real, and bring a gun. Right. There, uh, I need a police dog. I like that. Indiana State Police Trooper Ed Lukenheimer 
Uh, Ed, Luke, and... <laughs> he was assigned to traffic control along That's... the interstate right there near Griffith, Indiana exit, right? And he said, quote, that was impossible. It was like an invasion. They were bound for Bull Island come hell or high water. That's like a Johnny Cash song or something. Oh, here shit. it is. Yeah. By Friday night, the festival, uh, by Friday night of the festival weekend, thousands of concert goers had poured into the area, many simply crashing through the gates without stopping to buy the $20 tickets, um, eager to set up camp and claim a spot near the stage. By Sunday, the crowd had swelled. Estimates ran between 200,000 and 300,000 people. Wow. That's just so many people in one spot. Did you hear the lineup? Well, yeah, I, I get it. I, I get why they're <laughs> right. They're, I mean, if they had, um, if we had experience as a nation with the Woodstock and the Altamont and a couple of the ones in Southern California, Monterey, yeah, yeah, the I, awesome I, when you said they were hoping to sell 55,000 55, tickets, 55,000 that's what the capacity was. Hey, I guess if it was just the Eagles, fine, but it had. It had Ozzy Osbourne there, baby. For sure, dude. Ted Nugent. I mean, like, yeah, man. Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Yeah. Cars were lined up on county roads for miles, and scores more were left abandoned on the interstate. Frustrated by the long lines of traffic, people just simply left their cars yeah. and hiked in like seven miles from oh, the interstate not, to the I festival. With these festivals, I think that just happened. Quote, we'd never seen a mass of humanity in one spot, Lukenheimer says. Ever. It wasn't <laughs> the nudity or the illegal drugs, mescaline, LSD, marijuana, and heroin. Uh, that made officers nervous as much as the swelling clou- crowds gathering at remote sites. They were desperately unprepared for the onslaught. So things like food and water and bathrooms were in short supply. Showers, there were no showers. People just had to go into the river in the Wabash to, to <laughs> bathe. Tom and Bob had transported 300 wooden toilets to the scene the night before the festival began. 300. <laughs> That's one toilet per 100,000 person. Oh, my gosh. Or something like that. Uh, 10,000 people. Uh, but the crowds had dismantled the privies to use as firewood. They're just like, uh, yeah, we need wood to burn, though. Dude, I've, I've done a little dabbling in some uh, festival work. <laughs> and, and honestly, the, one of the most important things is your toilets. Gotta, you need to have a lot of toilets. Gotta have a just, bog. Because especially if you're all just sitting around eating, drinking, and if you don't have flushable toilets. You don't believe how many times that people flush a toilet. You can't even have like a septic system. You got to have a bunch for, for like 500 people. For every hundred people, I think you need like two toilets. Wow. I mean, it's about that. That's a lot of toilets. Yeah. You ever gone to a beer festival? Oh yeah. Like over in Grand Rapids and stuff? Sure, sure. There is just lines, lines and lines and they're busy. The people are lined up out of them. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and, and, and imagine if you didn't have those toilets. Well, they don't. <laughs> so here we are. At so, least they uh, had a river. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously. Oh, God. The, the, the muddy brown waters of the Wabash. <laughs> Normally, it's really clear. It's like laundry day in the Ganges. <laughs> By Sunday morning, rumors were spreading uh, through the crowd that the food trucks on site, they had food trucks on site, the food trucks on site were raising their food prices from 50 cents to a dollar for a hamburger. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, now that's like. Eight, eight bucks for a hamburger or something like that nowadays, well, right? Well, that's what I spend on a hamburger. Yeah, at a food truck, you kidding me? No, you're right. In response, a mob of an estimated 2,000 people stormed the food trucks, looted their contents, and then set them on fire. The food trucks, not the people. They actually got the people out of the food trucks. Get out. Get out. We're setting it on, please, sir. And they escorted need, them out the back, and then we lighted it on fire. How do we cook these burgers? <laughs> we'll light that on fire. <laughs> Headliner Rod Stewart didn't appear, nor did Black Sabbath, Joe Cocker, Fleetwood Mac, or most of the advertised lineup. Oh, no shit. Yep. And I with bet people were mad. People were mad. And with that, we're going to leave it on a mad note. Going to go take, take a break real quick here. And uh, when we come back... I'm going to go poop in your toilet. Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival continues. Wouldn't you get a splinter on a wooden toilet? I would think so, right? Yeah. But it's like an outhouse, you know? Just yeah. Years of, oh, they were freshly made wooden toilets. And, and don't, I mean, if you're a dude. Whatever. <laughs> And we're back. Can what we did talk you, more about toilets, Brian? I, I'm, you, you got me on your privy knowledge. You seem very knowledgeable about privies and No, I mean, you, the, got, the like. you got that many people. I mean, I think that was always a point made in any of these big festivals about the lack of sanitation. Yes. And that can cause other problems, make little problems bigger. 
I'm going to take a guess that there was no hand sanitizer at this festival. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So we are back at the uh, Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival 1972 in Illinois now. Started had, off in Indiana. Had possibly the biggest lineup of popular rockers in the world ever going to perform on the same stage. And everybody bails. Yeah, they didn't show. <laughs> Who did show? Do you have that list? Uh, it, yeah, I got some things here. We got okay, uh, we So got right things. here. Now, after the festival kicked off, several scheduled bands sent their agents to assess the situation. Like, they'd like, receive reports and then like go to the stage. You know, because again, you're walking a couple miles to get to see what's going well, on. Well, right. And you've already seen this in the history of things go bad. It could turn bad. So yeah. A lot of them would uh, get the report back and go, pack it up, guys. We're out. And so Black Sabbath, Joe Cocker, the Allman Brothers, May Hall, Bob Seger, Fleetwood Mac did not perform. Wow. They, yeah, they bailed. They were replaced with the likes of Flash Cadillac and the Continental Kids. They're awesome. Ramatam. I've never heard of that. Ah, uh, well, there you go. Uh, Santana. That, oh, really? There you go. He stepped up. All right. KC Thunder. Don't know that. CK Thunder. CK Thunder. Wasn't that the, uh, she was on The Office for one episode when Andy was waiting in line to be on uh, America's Got Talent show. I trust you. All right. So, yeah, she she showed up. And Vince Vance and the Valiants. There's a lot of V's in that. Well, <laughs> very. Very. Very much. Uh, promoters later said that they were last-minute disputes over money also. And so rampant act cancellations left long periods of silence on stage. <laughs> That's not a good look for a festival when you're supposed to have four days of music. Yeah. No. At least they had a stage. That, uh, for now. The performances that did go through are remembered fondly, though. So you got Ravi Shankar. He, yeah. was, he was crowd surfing on a wooden pallet. They passed him around. Oh, so. really? Playing his little sitar? Yep. And then Ted Nugent's Amboy Dukes and Black Oak, Arkansas. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. Often mentioned as standout sets. Yeah. Black, Black Oak uh, planned. They, were gonna, they got a flock of white dubs and crates under the stage, and then they set them free just as they hit like the last note of the set. Now, see, unfortunately, the road grew. Searched around, and they couldn't find any white doves, so they came back with three dozen pigeons, and uh, they released the pigeons, but the pigeons didn't know that they wouldn't fly, like, they didn't know pigeons don't fly in the dark. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I know, yeah. So instead, uh, they just headed for the stage lights, and then they're just walking around like Charlie Chaplin on the stage. <laughs> guy had a pigeon land on his shoulder, uh, another guy had a pigeon land on the neck of his guitar, and then front man Jim Dandy had one land on his head. Do not let the pigeon drive the bus or perform <laughs> at the schedule, at the festival. And then they would like shake the pigeon off like the guitar or shake him off his head, but then it would just fly around in a circle and then I land back it. on the guitar. Grab that pigeon and, and so. Well, no, up, the best part was the crowd thought it was part of the act. They're like, they got trained pigeons like doing <laughs> shows over there, man. Next thing you know, so. that, that band now toured with pigeons everywhere they <laughs> everywhere went. Everywhere they went, they're, they're called Pigeon Band. Yeah. Black Oak Pigeon. Uh, right. Also at Black Oak, Arkansas, there's a man that climbed on top of one of the towers and stripped down naked and started dancing. Ooh, that day, the people were like, "Ooh, neat!" And then they dropped thousands of sun visors from helicopters with the band's name on them. Wow, they were prepared to make a name for themselves. It was a huge festival. They were like, "This is yes, we are gonna break they out." They rained here. down visor hats from helicopters. Yep, there were lots of helicopters flying overhead constantly, from uh, police copters to television crews. Just, I mean, this Checking was the it out. thing. Yep, with four hundred thousand people standing around, it's quite the spectacle. Speaking of helicopters, <clears throat> Cheech and Chong were helicoptered in. They performed for fifteen minutes in a deluge of rain, cut their set short, and then swiftly helicoptered back out. So what they they didn't sing songs as much they're just kind of a comedy act right i think that's correct yeah dave's okay. not here man no yeah. hey, amen so a... ted nugent just real quick ted nugent and boy dukes um i'm not a huge i used to be a very big ted nugent fan <laughs> but <clears throat> my ted nugent not laugh. as much anymore no he's getting a little uncle ted's getting a little weird whatever yeah old people so <laughs> But there was one thing I always re so Ted always said he didn't drink and didn't do drugs, which is amazing. That's what he that claims. dude was nuts. Yep. Uh, he never really denied all the sex he had with young women, but whatever. He's a rocker. Energy. But the one thing that Ted had going for him is that he would walk into the studio, grab a pre-tuned guitar, lay down his track perfectly, and say, "I'm out. I'm not fucking around with you guys. Get your shit together, or I'm not playing." And he needed perfection every time. And he could shred on that guitar He's and did it perfectly. Very there was no good. fucking around. He nailed it first time. No fucking around. I think that's what he said. Late Monday, there's no more fucking around. Third day of the festival. Someone in the crowd torched the stage. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm done. The promised security forces of karate experts just broke it in half with their hands. They never showed up. <laughs> they did, they bailed. Yeah. Tom and Bob blame the crowd's predisposition to anger for the damage that was done. Quote, they had violence in their eyes when they got to the gate, not after they crossed it. Well, they got I've ripped never off se- on burgers. I've never seen such rough breed of people. After a lull, the announcer said there was no more. No more, no more. Uh, none, <laughs> not, no not like more, that. No more. Just like Love that. toys in the attic. No more. Uh, none of the big name groups had showed up, and the riot from the earlier with the torch and other food trucks, that seemed to pick up right where it left off, and eventually the stage was looted and burned to the ground. Uh, people were looting cars, vans, stealing gas, and wheels off of vehicles. Where are you going with those? <laughs> you need, you, are you just loading up your pickup with a bunch of other tires? <laughs> Seven mile hike with its tire. Uh, as you alluded to, the, sanit- the sanitation situation was just as chaotic. The promoters-, <laughs> the promoters had planned to drill 30 to 40 wells and create around 400 outdoor turlets. Uh, what they ended up with was a few dry wells and six privies. Yeah. So as the rain turned the festival grounds into a muddy slurry, uh, the particular pasture was named the turd fields. Oh, my God. People just dropped trow in the mud and just let it fly. Dude. <laughs> ah. My closest, my closest, I feel like the closest I've ever been to having to be in that situation and the going turd field in a turd field. And I don't know how close it is. I feel like it's probably pretty close. Is going to the bathroom at the Joe Louis Sports Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Just pissing in the troughs. Oh my gosh. Or no, that was a Tiger oh, Stadium. Oh, that's Tiger Stadium. Yeah. 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 yeah that was that. That was basically the same exact thing. Just a bunch of dudes standing around with their dicks, dicks out. <laughs> Here I am, five. And I know this is weird, dude. <laughs> I'm going to hold it, Dad. <laughs> it's so bad. It was just. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought of, like, public facilities until you started talking about, like, throwing festivals and stuff. You got 300,000 people just shitting. I mean, food. Like, hey, that man, four Santana food. goes on. I got to run up and uh, take a shit in the turd I mean, fields, and then we'll go up of, the stage. How many pounds of food do you think you need to eat in a day? Two? I, I, yeah, I so almost know. a million pounds of food. It's funny. We will get there, I promise so you. So that's that comes five. Up. That's 5,000 tons of food? 2,000 pounds. It's a lot of food. Per ton. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of food. No, it's more than 50,000 tons. That's whatever. Numbers. <laughs> a lot of numbers of food. Numbers are hard. A lot of numbers of food. Well, and that's a day. You need that many numbers of food. four days, yeah. For this many numbers, you need that many numbers. <laughs> He's holding up fingers for Someone. those of you who can't see us. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Uh, okay, there was, there was, a, you needed a lot of food, right, to get food. this thing going? And right. toilet paper. Right. Well, can't you also can't have a festival without a lot of drugs. A lot of that. I, those aren't, you bring your own drugs. It, everybody knows that. Well, they did, and they, boy, howdy, they brought a lot of them. There was actually a uh, section of the campground turned into a, a, like a shopping center, and it was dubbed, quote, Alice in Wonderland Avenue. Oh, if you needed drugs, you go buy drugs? Head down. Head, after you <laughs> stop by the turd fields, you head over to Alice in Wonderland Avenue, and, and then you go catch Santana on the state. And well, I, bet the you, I'll, I bet you, and this is, this is honesty, I bet you this, I bet you if you asked people that were involved in this or were at that or had anything to do with it and, and had I, boots on the ground witness reports that that Alice in Wonderland Avenue. Like Butch from Arizona? Was the most smoothly run part of the concert <laughs> yeah right yeah the drug dealers know drug what's dealers, up they got it down man like they're not this is hey i'm wearing a lot of drugs i'm gonna charge a fair price for them and we're gonna do it cool all right you know Everybody what be cool be we, cool we roll right into this buddy because uh one almost anything could be found there you are correct they had every sort of drug barbiturate you could think of from the 70s including powdered bleach being sold as heroin so you gotta watch out eh, eh. and then uh a quote about Alice Wonderland Avenue. Quote, the dope district looked like double rows of fish stands at the county fair, noted attendee named Dennis. Dennis. Uh, another one. There were rows of big old style wash tubs full of sugar cubes with the sign stuck in it saying, 25 cents a hit. So that's all the acid? That would be the acid. I acid. guess, I guess, hey, I just heard this from an incredible source. All right. Acid's a big thing in our high schools now, again. Yeah, it's yeah. back. Yeah, it's back. I don't know what I think about that. Acid and marijuana were being circulated like popsicles. How? 
I don't know. It's just what it said. I feel like acid and marijuana have a longer shelf life. Than <laughs> Can't you say like candy? Depends where you st- I, did, I didn't want to be cliche. I don't. Like popsicles? What was worrying was the amount of lace drugs that were doing the rounds, though. You had acid mis- mixed with strychnine being consumed. Ew, that, that's, a, that's a bad drug. They actually had an announcement over the PA system, don't take the purple acid. Well, if you took it, you don't get a second shot. It's strychnine. No. Food and water were in short supplies. A truck bringing food into the festival was hijacked, looted, and burned. Huh? Then. Well, they got the food. Back on day two, the food supply had dwindled, and frustrated crowds boiled over the prices gouging that started. Remember, we started talking about how they changed the vendors? Mm-hmm. Uh, one account states that a vendor charged $10 for a hamburger, which would be $57 in today's money. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wrong. <laughs> that's not right. No, you shouldn't do that, that to people? That, don't, you're not supposed to do that. Folks turned over many RVs and robbed vendors. State police trooper Ed Luckenheimer again recalls, quote, We couldn't really control all the drugs. We just hope they didn't have too many overdoses. And that's another thing about that many people. You are you are going to have overdoses. You will need an infirmary. They did have medical tents on site. They helicoptered out more serious cases, including a pregnant teenager who went into labor in the middle of the night. Okay. There were two deaths, a 24-year-old man who drowned in the river, mm-hmm. and uh, the other was a 20-year-old whose death was attributed to a heroin overdose. His- See, that's amazing. There was only two deaths? Yeah. Oh, this festival is actually, we're about to get to some of the really staggering statistics. You're like, really? All right. Only two deaths. That's two deaths. amazing. Uh, yeah, and this dude, he wouldn't have died either. His friends were unaware there was a medical tent, so they carried him seven miles to the interstate where the police tried to help him. And uh, there you go. There was a hit and run, too. Attendee Linda Gray recalls being run over by a truck as she slept in a makeshift campsite. She had some broken ribs, crushed vertebrae, and she was transported to the hospital in the back of a Jeep after helicopters found themselves blocked out by bad weather. Hmm. That's not too bad more blank cards blank card. i was gonna let that go she noted that cheech and chong referred to her as the chick who got run over during the performance man <laughs> that was like one tenth their uh hey i'm there one tenth of their uh set because they're only on for like 20 <laughs> 15 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> right right you got the biggest shout out ever girl uh one attendee tells the story of being mugged at gun co- point by three smack freaks uh he says quote they went through my pockets and they got pissed when they found them empty and one on the right hit me in the head and I slammed back into the car and fell on the left side. <clears throat> Saved by his future brother-in-law, the victim and his friends giggled about their adventure the whole ride home. Like, I got mugged, man. <laughs> man that guy came trying to mug at me, man. I didn't have nothing, though. He's, like, practicing, man. That's a, that's, a, that's a thing about I never liked about a fight back in, like, the, the day. You know, you're 20 years old, go to the bar. Yeah. And I'm not talking about me getting into a fight. Anybody getting into a fight you were sure. with. Right. The rest of the night. That's all you're talking about. I, I hated that. So these you. three hippies are driving home. <laughs> Probably got some stolen tires in the back trunk. <laughs> yeah, right. They ain't got no hamburger, that's they, for sure. They might be driving home on three tires, you never know. And some purple acid. So yeah, right. <laughs> all, they talked. We got all this free purple acid, home. man. Nobody wanted it. I just think it's great. So yeah, uh, there was an overdose, another overdose victim though. This teenager was uh, carried out of the festival with no breath, no pulse, but he was saved by state troopers who performed mouth to mouth resuscitation. Okay, so still only two people died. Yeah, pretty much. People got injured. The weekend ended in a pretty big legal and financial mess for Tom and Bob. They lost about four million dollars in potential revenue. They were hit with a rash of lawsuits from angry investors and disgruntled vendors who had their cars and trucks flipped over and burned. I'd be a little mad about it. The IRS went after them, alleging unpaid taxes. Well, they, did, I, they had a lot of unpaid everything. Not long after the festival ended, Bob reported he was additionally sued by a farmer who was next door to that property, who uh, <laughs> seeking compensation for loss of cattle due to, quote, marijuana inhalation. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a lie. Well, <laughs> I, I, I could see getting high and then going and eating a cow, but not a cow <laughs> yeah, dying because right. of secondhand smoke. Bunch of tweaked out cows over there walking into the river. I, I'm, maybe I'm a bad person for saying this. If it was me at that festival and yeah. they were running out of food, yeah. I mean, A, I would use the river to bathe in and use maybe at the bathroom. It washes itself away. <laughs> but I'm also going over there and I'm going to get a cow. Yeah. I'm going to eat that cow. Take a cow I'm down. I'm going to make everybody a steak. I'm going to be real cool. I'm going to burn down a, a, a food stage. truck. And food then, truck stage. And, hey, I cooked, this, I cooked that cow that I got from over there with a piece of the stage I got from over there. Go get a, uh, some, some privy wood, you know, get a nice yeah. fire going. Creative solutions to problems that we've created. <laughs> Months after Bull Island, Tom told a local reporter that he'd left the music business disheartened and broke. 
Well, it sound these people were not prepared for this at all. <laughs> I would say the second festival ever, and this is what happens. Hey, we did pretty good with that little, uh, we had that little um, ice cream thing there. A couple of ladies came after church. All right, how many people we get there? Seven? We got seven? All right. Let's try for 55,000. Just... And it was a success. They overshot it by just... about 800%. <laughs> yeah, but like a lot of those people didn't pay. I just, I find it funny that the guy's like, man, I miss Ike Turner. All right, uh, Tom is, you know, disgruntled and bad. His partner, Bob, continues on, though, attempting to organize other rock festivals around the Midwest, but he is mis- met with some opposition, and uh, he's got, like, a bad name on him. Were kind of. you <laughs> that guy? Yes. I exactly. think, where have I heard your name? Both of those dudes are tangled in legal battles, like, because of the festival for years and years to go. Promoters eventually found in contempt of court and fined several thousand dollars. Uh, considered most to be slap on the wrist. They're like, I yeah, I got out of hand. Uh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> this is a bad kegger. Bob is currently president of the Motion Picture Hall of Fame in Palm Springs. Really? And, That's uh, weird. Yeah, Tom concluded that rock festivals were not, quote, morally right, and he retired to Arizona. Well, what did he do? Oh, no, that was it. He's just out of the... He's just out. We don't know out. what we he did. No, he like, just, he might have worked at a Red yeah, Lobster. he went straight. We don't know. Sorry, I thought there was a... Okay. What I've done now is normally I would get, close with a quote <clears throat> from, like, the musician and stuff, but I have quotes from people who were at Bull Island. Okay, just uh, attendees? <clears throat> attendees. Okay. Cheryl from Evansville says, quote, it was an unforgettable time. I was 19, ready to get married the next month. We just bought a new 1972 Ford van. It pulled our camper. We parked next to the Wabash and could see all the naked people. At night, we could see people shoot up uh, with the lanterns we had placed outside the camper. We walked up to the stage and could hear the music. Just a river of young kids having the time of their life. No porta potties present, so we used the field and the high grass. Uh, saw a lot of drugs for sale. Didn't see any fights, but back then it was all love and peace. Saw a lot of young kids getting frisky under the blankets. <laughs> all right. It's a f- freak show. Barb from Newburgh, Indiana, quote, I was pregnant when I went to Bull Island. I went with my husband, brother-in-law, and sister-in-law. We went just to see it. We stayed for half a day just to walk around. I was the only one I saw uh, who had a pregnant belly and was sober. <laughs> she put that, that caveat in there. <laughs> and. <laughs> Butch from Gilbert, Arizona says, quote, I went with my brother and friends from Washington, Indiana, man. Was it a trip and a half? Four of us walked up to the stage, uh, to the river, drank a gallon of wine on the way. We brought what was supposed to be opium, but it was actually shoe polish. <laughs> Idiots. I feel that this was uh, the last great cultural happening. Yeah, yeah. It might have been. It might. It was at the tail end. It, pretty close. Ken from Nashville. Love Nashville, dude. Oh, my God. If you can go to Nashville, go to Nashville. It's great. If you go to Nashville, go to Nashville. If you can, Prolific. Go. Oh, if you yeah. can. Yeah, if yes. you can, go. Uh, Ken from Nashville, quote, we spent the night rolling joints on the access road in my 65 Chevy pickup truck, parked the first row above the crowd. We drank Boone's Farm, enjoyed the music, and until they set the vendor's trucks on fire. <laughs> no, we're all, no burgers. No burgers. I want a burger now. D.D. Squirrel. That's, best, her, that's a name. Festival goer. Okay. D.D. Squirrel. D.D. Squirrel. Quite. I'll even do it. By the time I got back home, I was half dead. My sister ran me up to the hospital. I was bedridden for three weeks. I still have scar tissue in my left lung from the experience. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> Dee Dee Squirrel. Dee Dee Squirrel. Dee Dee, if you're listening, I'd like you to call in. We'd like to talk to you and get your more firsthand account of this. That would be the dealio. awesome. Dee Dee Squirrel. And a quote from Bob, co-promoter Bob Alexander, quote, I think that the mere fact that we're talking about this 40 years later says something about it as a major cultural event that happened in middle America. You know, I'd love to try it again in the same location. Yeah, you'd still be paying your bills from the <laughs> 70s, man. Tom's like, no, no, shut up. I gotta go to work at Red Lobster. Erie Canal Soda Pop Festival. Woo! 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 I like hearing about the festival. How I was mean, that? Was that fun? No, I think it's cool to hear. Yeah. I mean, I... Well, you read that first list of musicians off. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, blow that, your ass off. That sounded that would be, amazing. And then you read the 
same list and said they all canceled. Right. And then next thing you know, but it sounds like that one um, Arkansas Jim Duggan. What was it? <laughs> the guy it's with the pigeons. Jim Dandy and it's Black Oak, Arkansas. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> with, the, with the trained pigeons, those guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. They sound like somebody I need to get to know a little bit better. Have yeah. To check yeah, them yeah, out. Yep. Yeah. Drive Definitely home today. check out Black Oak, Arkansas. All right. Hey, guess what? We have this time. We actually have some feedback. Gosh. Ben hates that noise. My ear balls. Yeah. If you guys would like to leave us some feedback, we are on all the major social media platforms, Facebook, Stitcher, Twitcher, Twitter, Instagram. And it, and if it's really good or really bad, we'll read it. It can't be in the middle. No. Well, if you want to leave one in the middle, but the, we want to read some. I'll read them all, all honestly. Right. I'm I looking at this all. one here. All right, right. <laughs> you want to read this? This should no, be you. No, you read. No, you, got, you, get, oh, you do the all right. readings. All right. I was going to say you should do the, the readings from now on. But all right, we got a Stitcher review from Summit Rum says, great show. Uh, quick, fun listen for crime and music. It's not so long that I have to set aside a huge time block, but still long enough that I get lots of great detail. Smile emoji. It literally says smile emoji. It, that's wrote actually, out with an S-M-I-L-E. Yeah. Smile emoji. It, I, Brian, was that your mom? No. Did your mom write that? Not at all. Thank you so much, it's so nice. Summit Rum. It's uh, so nice. We got an iTunes review from K Roby T. Uh, so much fun. Loving this podcast so far. The hosts are funny and talk about a wide variety of artists. Chances are at least one of your favorite musicians is on the list. So if you want to laugh and learn a bit about the artists you like or don't even like, this podcast will definitely l- deliver. Thank you so much, K Roby T. These are plants. These are not. These are plants. I don't know any of these people. All right. And then finally, we've got a couple of YouTube comments. But thank you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. I appreciate every one of them, man. Just like, you took time to reach out to us, you know? Like I love our podcast. Thanks. I just, right. I'm amazed others do. I yeah, love our you. fans. Yeah. I'm telling you. All right, guys. So we got some YouTube comments. This is on our uh, David Allen Co. episode, which is actually episode two, if you think about how long ago David that Allen was. David Allen Co. was only episode two? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was much later than that. Nope. And okay. he's one of our most popular episodes, honestly. I don't. All right. He's I, a lightning rod. It just has racist entry. in the title. That's why people download it. Okay. So, all right. And this so, is in. This is in comment on on david allen Coe. yep this okay. is on the david allen co episode um this just came in cool hey man it says jonathan mitchell you're yeah. up for public quote commenting so southern traditionalist from ohio totally clueless yep <laughs> i added the inflection so I'm, I'm assuming he means that we called him a southern traditionalist from ohio yes and we're clueless apparently I'm, that's what i'm gathering from it yeah. That's how I went to bed feeling last night. Accurate. Oh. Accurate. Accurate. That's not a plan. That's real stuff, baby. I want to go listen to it again to see if we did. I don't remember. Uh, I'll, trust, I'll trust you, Jonathan. Uh, we got Joe Flanagan. He says, uh, you guys seem pretty cool, but you don't know shit about country music. <laughs> Thank you. you Thank are, you very much, Joe. You are correct, sir. I know a teeny, teeny little bit. And then... Uh, is, you don't need to know a lot. There's only three chords, man. Barbara. Barbara says, there's nothing wrong with red meat. It's sugar and carbs that cause heart disease. Okay. There you go. There's your health tip for the day. There you go. And those are some of our uh, feedback moments that we had. Ah. So please reach out to us on any method that you choose. To, if you want to comment and give us a little bit of your feedback, we would love that. Nobody's wrote us a letter in like long form cursive yet, have they? No, I have not. Well, Put we don't give out. Mail. We don't. We don't give out the address, the mailing address. Hey, dude, we're so huge now. All they gotta do is put crime and music. They don't need a city, state, PO box. At. Crime and just, music. Just put crime and music. It'll get there. It will get there. Hey, it's like sending Matt a letter. If you just address it with his name, and put the name of the the, the zip code on there, it gets to him. Are you serious? Well, he he lives on. There's our buddy buddy Matt lives up north. Oh, you he, can get a plug for his mm, business. It's fine. No, he lives up north. All right, and it's not a real. It's whatever. And he and he built a house. Kind of, he bought ten acres and he split it into two fives. But right. to to build where he wanted to build, he had to put in an access road, and it's a private drive, and he had to name it. And that's officially what his address is, um, Lakeview Trail or whatever crap. Pri- it is. Private drive. <laughs> well, that doesn't show up in any Google anything. Right. So if you try to send him a letter to that, um. Unless you've been working at their post office for like a decade, you don't know where it's at. Wow. Yeah. So you just got to write his name and a zip code. Get sorry to him. I see. Yeah. It's a small little town. Well, if you are from a small little town, let us know about the little quirks you guys have out there. And if you had some crazy musicians go off the rails, let us know about that too. Oh, I did have one. 
that I gotta remember to get to you. Okay, I got one. You after do? The, after the thing, I gotta I gotta remember to get I gotta figure it out. All it's right. a local guy. Ben's it is a local guy. Ben's volunteering guy. suggestions. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up for another <laughs> week in crime and music. Um Jeez, what's you're, you're Brian Kinsley. I am. I and you're you're Ben Rupel. Right. Um that's crime and music. Never trust a big butt and a smile. Alright. trusted one one time how'd that work out for you i can't remember still paying for it i'll let you know when it's over